Good morning, my name is Chris Fox, and today we're talking about harnessing the power of the dark side. Yes, I am talking about Star Wars. I'm talking about anger, which is an often denigrated emotion. It's something that we don't talk a lot about. You know, sometimes we'll talk about it in our writing, but in general, anger is not something uh, that we are encouraged to embrace or to utilize um, because it's considered to be, I guess, a, a toxic emotion. But I mean, I'm going to be blunt. You know, if you've read any of my nonfiction, if you go back to the beginning of my career, a lot of what has gotten me where I am right now was somebody telling me it couldn't be done and me getting really, really angry that they had told me, oh, there's no way that you could do that. And then going out and doing it anyway, where somebody said, oh, you can't do this. And I'm like, oh, really? Hold my beer. And then I would go out and, and you know, achieve whatever crazy thing that it was. Um, and if you're familiar with Star Wars, the Sith very much embody this. And, and what I began to realize as I was looking at my career is many of my biggest achievements came in fits and starts when I was harnessing my passion. That's really what the dark side of the Force in Star Wars is supposed to be all about. Um, I would get, you know, angry or passionate or just engrossed in my work and accomplish these amazing things. But the intensity of that emotion is dangerous and would leave me, you know, kind of drained afterwards. Um, so anyway, I'll I'll, uh, I'll flash up the um, the Sith Creed, and you can see what that is. This is is uh, something I've read in novels and, and seen in video games. Um, and, and yeah, it's a little bit tongue in cheek. Obviously, we're not Sith, but envy is something powerful we can utilize. And and I want to be clear before we go any further. I don't mean jealousy because envy and jealousy are not the same thing. So let's start with the difference between the two of these things. When I saw Brandon Sanderson back in, gosh, 2009, um, whenever A Gathering Storm came out, and uh, I got to shadow him at the book signing, I wasn't jealous because jealousy means you wanna take away what someone else has. You see somebody's got something that you, you really would love to have, and you think, man, that person doesn't deserve it, they shouldn't have it, that's jealousy. Envy is, man, that's really cool. I wish I was also an internationally best-selling author selling fantasy novels and telling my stories. That's envy. Envy is something powerful that you can tap into. If you see somebody who has something you want, there's no reason you can't go out and get it. And wanting that thing that they have, the success, I want to break the top 100 on Amazon, I want to sell X number of books, I want to make X number of money, you know, or dollars, I want to... Um, write, you know, a certain number of words, I want to have a certain amount of uh, acclaim or a certain number of reviews, or I want my own TV show, whatever it is that you want, it's okay to look, and I think powerful, to look at other people who have what you want to have and envy them. And you don't want to let this emotion um, kind of pervert itself into jealousy, that that's a dangerous road and can, can really, I think, harm you in a lot of ways. It'll do more harm to yourself. You know, anger will burn in you as much as it'll, you know, burn and, and provide a resource. But, you know, if you're going with the envy and you're really working hard and you have this determination to, to hit these goals, you can accomplish crazy stuff. Um, and some of the times where, you know, I've strayed a little bit into jealousy, um, I'm not proud of, of what I felt in those times or what I may have wished on that person. Uh, but I certainly felt the results of that. So just to, to tell a story I probably haven't told in five years on this channel, um, once upon a time, I worked in collections. And I was making $12 an hour, and I hated my job. I really did. I felt like I had missed my shot in life. Um, I wasn't going to make it anywhere. My writing was never going to make it anywhere. The coolest thing I got to do each week was, you know, get high and play video games. Or, you know, if we had a game going, my friends would come over, and we'd play some Dungeons and & Dragons, and I'd get to, to story tell. I get to tell games in my, my fantasy world, um, which, by the way, is now finally coming to life and my first fantasy novel is about to come out. So, you know, this is definitely coming full circle, you know, decades later. But back then, um, I was just so angry and I felt so useless and like I had no future and my potential had been squandered and I wasn't going to be able to go anywhere further. And then, of course... Um, I ended up meeting Brandon Sanderson and seeing that someone not so very far removed from myself had what I wanted to, to achieve. And then all of a sudden it became possible and I realized maybe I can do this. Um, 
well, I, I derailed myself a little bit and, and talked about Sanderson. This gentleman in my life, um, his name is Daniel, and I won't give any more information about him. We were good friends for a long time, and Daniel was a very successful software engineer. So here I am, making $12 an hour, working this collections job where my job is literally, I'll call you up, hey, you're late on your car payment, where's the money? I mean, try to imagine doing that 100 times a day. Um, it, it was soul crushing, especially when this guy had no college degree, was making incredible money. You know, I think it was six figures back then. If not, it was, it was a lot of money, certainly double my salary. Uh, and I really wanted what he had. And I was very, very jealous. So what I did is, oh, yeah. And I went out and I taught myself iOS development. And many of you know the rest of what happened. But, you know, I did the 5,000 words per hour app and I landed a job um, as a software developer for several years and then eventually sailed off into the sunset as an author. But I would never have become a software engineer if I didn't have Daniel tell me to my face, I don't think you can do it. You can't cut it, Chris. You can't cut it in the professional world. The anger that took root in me, the fury that I felt when someone told me, nope, there's no way you can do it, Chris. You're just not gonna be able to do it. I can't express it. And I was just, I was off to the races and I've never looked back. So if there is somebody telling you you can't do it right now. If there's somebody who is making you angry and who is continually denigrating you, these people are giving you gifts. Use them. If they're telling you you can't do it, prove them wrong. Do it anyway. You know, follow your vision, follow your dream, and, and do what you want to do. If you want to write this story, write it. You know, find a way to make it happen. Use this as fuel. But but remember that when I say use this as fuel, it's not fuel to get angry and get on social media. It's fuel to sit down in that chair and take the action steps necessary to finish that a book that's going to put you on the map or you can say, hey, listen, you know, I'm an internationally best-selling author if that's what you want to do. You've got to do the work. And this can be really the motivation that makes us do the work. But, you know, you've, again, you've got to turn it into work and not just turn it into anger and let it derail you. And, you know, I want to caution you one more time. There's there's a, a dark, dangerous road you can walk down. You know, we've all seen what happens to the Sith in Star Wars. It ends bad, man. It ends bad. Uh, so you want to be careful that you don't let that be you, that you don't get angry all the time. And I try not to stay angry and I try to wish good things on people. Um, and, and I try to help people and give back wherever I can. But man, if somebody slights you or they make you angry, the best possible revenge is living well. So funnel that anger, give them a polite smile, and then funnel that anger into, oh yeah, I'm going to show you and I'm going to do these amazing things and transform my life and be this icon. Uh, and, and you'll find along the way, maybe you inspire some people. And so this, this thing that originally was born out of anger for you will create some joy in the world. Uh, anyway, kind of a rally video, but I haven't done a motivation one in a while. Um, I've been quiet for a few weeks and a lot of people are like, hey, Chris, you were doing so well. There was multiple videos a week. What's going on? Um, nothing. I am writing faster and more furious than I ever have in my entire life. I have never, ever fallen into a rabbit hole like this one before. Um, if you're keeping score, I'm over 200,000 words. So it's, what, February 25th, so I have at least one more full writing day tomorrow, and I'm at like 102,000 words for February. That's written and edited. So for the year, 202,000 words so far, and it'll probably end up at like 207 um, by the time you're seeing this video, because um, I'll finish my words for Friday. So I've almost finished Shattered Gods. This is, without a doubt, my finest novel. It's going to need a lot of work in terms of editing. There's lots of stuff that I'll have to do for this. Um, and I'll walk you guys through that process. You'll get to see it come together. But this is a really, really good book. Um, and I have some big plans for it, and I'm excited about where it's going. So I'll, I'll talk about the editing, um, some of the additional plotting, and then, of course, the marketing we're going to get into as we roll closer to the launch. Um, but, you know, I, I, I don't know. I just wanted to deviate from that because I've spent so much time talking about um, writing fantasy and the challenge this year and my road to a million words. I wanted to get some more motivation stuff out because it is a tough year. It's just as tough as last year was. We're all struggling. Um, and sometimes you need some tools to get by. So, you know, you've got a ha hammer sometimes in your, your toolbox and you've got a drill and you've got a screwdriver. Well, you know, maybe this is another tool you can use. You know, anger isn't always a bad thing. And it'll be interesting to see what people's reaction to this video is because culturally we're conditioned to think that serenity good um, passion, anger, bad. And in my experience as a creative, that's not been the case. Like anger has been super useful. I've, I've, I've anger written entire novels. Um, anyway, uh, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. What do you guys think? Am I, am I full of it? Or is this a useful tool? Um, if you have your own stories about somebody who told you something couldn't be done and then you did it anyway, sure. Tell it in the comments. I'd love to hear that. 
Um, anyway, I'm going to get back to the writing. Um, I have probably another week before I'm finished with this book, which, uh, for the record, I didn't intend to write. I wasn't trying to write Shattered Gods. I said, oh, I'll just write it for a few days, and I'll switch to something else, but that never happened. And now, you know, here we are a couple hundred thousand words later. So I'm going to get back to work, and I will see you guys next week.